Yo! What's up, guys? I am doing fantastic today. I have the day off. Um, tomorrow's my birthday, Cinco de Jefe. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, I just wanted to do a post here and break down the land a little bit. We got some things to talk about. Um, it was fantastic. I had a great time watching the LAN. Um, and uh, yeah, My Gaming Edge put together some great coverage. Sizer doing a beastly job running oh, running the stream. Uh, very high quality. You can check their VODs on uh, justin.tv slash My Gaming Edge. And uh, yeah, go through there and check all that stuff out. We are going to be doing our own VODs of the LAN as well. Um, really excited about that. People have been asking for them and clamoring for them, and of course, we are going to come through with it. Um, we just got to get cracking on it. Uh, we do have some other stuff working. Um, Lucky Luke uh, is going to be working on um, a, a land clip as soon as I give him some of the demos. And uh, let's break it down. Here's what I want to do for you guys. Um, we're basically going to, you know, creep our way through the land and. Um, you know, literally look at the really exciting matches and the exciting maps, um, and uh, you know, showcase what's going on for you. So, um, the opening round matches uh, between um, EMG and um, excuse me, I'm blanking a little bit on the first round. EMG and Cole and X6 versus Blight. We are probably just going to skip those. Um, they were pretty good matches, but both of them were 2-0 affairs, um, and uh, you know, with the uh, um, with X6 prevailing pretty quickly and with EMG prevailing pretty quickly. So uh, we're going to start off things with the first round of the upper bracket uh, between X6 and EMG. We're going to cover the first match in that, uh, map in that series, um, Granary, and then we're going to, that was that 5-4 crazy ass battle that everybody was like, oh my god. And then we're going to cover the third map of that series, Badlands. Then we're going to move down to the upper bracket, I'm sorry, the lower bracket um, finals, which uh, I'm not going to reveal the matchups because even though a lot of you did see the LAN, well, I don't know. I guess we're going to go over this anyways. Um, lower bracket finals is going to be EMG versus Cole. Uh, we're going to show the last map of that, uh, Badlands, and then we're going to move on and show the grand finals, probably just map three of the grand finals. But that's going to be uh, four episodes of X Television from the LAN, really covering and breaking down what happened uh, in those matches in great detail, and that is going to be awesome because there was some really crazy stuff going on in that. Um, but uh, as I was alluding to, we're also going to be pretty busy because in a week and a half, uh, May fourteenth, six p.m. Pacific, it's going to be the uh, Communities versus Pros Spring Cleaning Event put on by Apocalypse Gaming, End of Reality Game Server Hosting, and X Television. Uh, as we are going to be hosting the stream for the event, AG has been organizing the event, and End of Reality is hosting the Mumble servers and the game servers, and um, yeah, just being a big backbone for us on this event. So we're super stoked about that. It is going to be um, you know nine players representing different communities from TF2 playing against a um, team of Check6 Gaming, um, a little bit more on them in just a second, but I'm really excited about this format because the nine versus six has been uh, a great way to showcase uh, PEB players, um, and then also you know how good the pro players are that they can actually just battle out against a numerical advantage and still have a very exciting even match. Um, the casting uh, crew is going to be myself, Mulk the Tiger, joining me in person. He is moving to Portland in uh, a week. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed when he was side by side with me uh, before uh, a couple weeks ago when he was visiting in town. Now he's going to be living here, and that is really exciting. Uh, he's definitely going to become a stronger contributor to the XTV team, and uh, that's just going to be awesome. So that oh, and then uh, Parable is joining us as well. So uh, it's really going to be a fantastic cast. Uh, also, Dionysus will be joining us, um, kind of in a production capability um, in the room, but you know, uh, managing the stream chat and uh, just uh, communicating with the community uh, and uh, the AG team. So uh, let's get down to the land. So really the, the big story, um, I can't avoid this in this video. If, if you want to watch those uh, land videos, the VODs, um, 
and you know be totally surprised at what happens I suggest you probably just move on at this point um, and uh, watch something else you go give me a thumbs up first but uh, yeah tune this out uh, so X6 did prevail at the land they kicked ass um, they were uh, pretty unstoppable um, a dangerous force to be reckoned with uh, and then um, then thanks things took a turn for the interesting uh, there is a video out there that uh, was a mumble recording of when um, the X6 players broke the news to Banny, as well as them just having a discussion with, I'm not entirely sure who all was in there, uh, but having a discussion of the events that transpired afterwards. So uh, Kalkin, as the team captain, was given the trophy, uh, the, the nice blast trophy of ESCA, um, was given the trophy and had it in his hotel room. And TLR, who in the past has been on several teams that have competed at LAN, but has never uh, persevered all the way to the championships, has never won the trophy uh, himself in the past, um, TLR uh, decided uh, to go downstairs uh, to pretend that he was Kalkin and to ask um, the uh, person uh, behind the desk at the hotel for a new copy of the hotel key, uh, which he was given. So then TLR goes upstairs, swipes into Calkin's Cal room, um, obtains the cup, uh, puts it in his car, goes outside, puts it in his car. Apparently it was raining quite severely in Dallas. And while I'm used to rain up here in um, Portland, uh, when I was in Dallas last May and uh, hit us with a torrential downpour, it is pretty torrential. Um, so I guess uh, TLR did not want to drive. Um, I think he had a pretty long drive to go. Did not want to drive in the rain. So he moved his car and then he went back into the hotel. Um, and then um, at this point, you know, uh, Check Six Gaming started discovering that something was going on. Um, you know, I don't know the precise timeline. But they discovered that the trophy was gone. They were talking to, um, you know, then they started talking to TLR and TLR was kind of, you know, uh, hiding the fact at first or dismissive about it, but obviously, you know, they put two and two together and TLR did not want to go uh, get the trophy for him and uh, eventually what happened is a Torbol got involved in it and uh, Torbol was like, seriously, like, is this what you want to do, TLR? And um, Kalkin was threatening to call the cops, um, you know, which uh, somebody, he, TLR did essentially break into Kalkin's room and did steal something that wasn't his um but you know then tlr went and got it and gave it back to him uh and then i guess uh you know shortly thereafter tlr was like oh i gotta go to the bathroom and then just got off and jumped into his car drove away um so the story is pretty funny i mean it's pretty lull worthy um but it is also you know uh disappointing um you know tlr is a fantastic player uh, TLR versus Platinum in the MGE um, mod tournament, one v one. You can check out that video on our uh, archives. And um, yeah, TLR. I mean, without a doubt, he's a very skillful player. Um, he, in terms of his play, is an inspiring figure. Um, you know, but uh, it's it's disappointing to see his uh, immaturity. And uh, really, this was a severely immature action. Um, you know, Kalkin uh, apparently had asked Torball and was like, hey, you know, is there any chance that we can get replicas of this trophy made? You know, so that everybody on the team could have one. And Torball was like, oh, yeah, no problem. You know, like, talk to me after the LAN. You know, uh, we'll, we'll take care of it, you know. Um, and to, you know, respond to that, I don't know if TLR was really aware of that. But to uh, respond to this situation about like trying to troll your own teammates, I, I mean, you know, it's not even really a troll. Um, you know, if it was a troll, he would have been very apologetic after realizing that his teammates felt violated um, in terms of trust um, and offended by his actions. Um, but, uh, you know, it seems from what I've heard of the Czech Six uh, players is that um, TLR has been very unapologetic. Um, after the fact of his actions and um, you know as somebody who's been a sports coach um, you know it's 
it's very disappointing to see somebody treat their teammates like that. Um, and I think it reflects upon the immaturity that is present in the community. Um, also, you know, I mean, it should be noted that um, the community, some aspects of the community have responded in immature ways, um, you know, hyping up uh, the trolling of TLR and his um, uh, reputation on Godfrag, which is a terrible place, uh, as being a horse fucker. Yes, I said it. I said the F word. Um, you know, and he's gotten trolled for that. I think he lives on a horse farm, uh, which is why that joke came around. You know, and, uh, you know, Godfrag in some re uh, respects has been very relentless with that. Um, you know, but uh, I, I think that TLR should brush all that stuff off. But, you know, TLR, straight to your point, I was actually on, uh, on Saturday, I was driving to go uh, to uh, Claudia's Sports Bar, where my uh, fiance Busty Latit works. I was actually watching the land there for a while on a laptop. And um, I saw a car that had like one of those stickers, you know, where it says like, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, Holland or, you know, three letters. And uh, there was one that said TLR. And then also on the on the truck, there was a little sticker and it was the logo that TLR uses as his avatar. And I was like, oh, hey, it's TLR. You know, and uh, so TLR is, is our guy, you know, people like him and stuff. But TLR, man, it was very immature of you. You have to apologize for your actions. And uh, hopefully, you know, you grow up a little bit because of it. Um, you know, sports, um, real sports, you know, in teams and stuff, you know, college, high school, you have these sort of things happen all the time. You know, people act really immature. They do something stupid to their teammates. Um, you know, and uh, it's part of how we grow up as people. You know, we grow up as people by making mistakes, you know, um, and, and learning from our mistakes. So. I really hope that TLR, um, you know, it's it's too late for him on check six. He's already been cut. They had a team meeting, uh, so they were trying not to uh, really make their decision public or whatever it was uh, until that team meeting. And then even after that, it was funny. There was a, a Gottfrag uh, thread by Harblue, I believe, started it. said uh, a word from check six, and then his first post was no comment, uh, which is pretty funny. So... Um, you know, but uh, without being uh, apologetic, uh, really, you know, what are you going to expect? Ex accept, uh, accept, expect uh, to be cut. You know, so um, he's been cut from TLR that are from uh, X six. TLR has been cut from X six, and uh, that's the end of at least that aspect of the drama. Drama for X six, and uh, TLR might find it hard to find another team. Um, you know, unless he um, grows up a lot as a person and, uh, you know, is straightforward with whatever team he tries to join. So, I mean, you know, good luck to you in the future, TLR, but uh, grow up a little bit and uh, learn from your mistake. So, uh, let's move on to a little bit of the other land drama besides X6 and uh, TLR. Um, so, Blight Gaming, uh, I want to get into this. Um, you know, prior to the LAN, uh, they were tagged up as makes sense. They dropped their blight tag and um, uh, a very self-referential tag name, um, makes sense. Uh, and, um, you know, I thought that that's what they were going to be tagged up at the LAN. Black Flogger was saying something about how he's got flight tickets for him. And it turns out that he did have flight tickets and he did play for the flights of his team. So at the LAN... Um, Blight Gaming was tagged up as Blight Gaming. The roster was representing for Blight, uh, but in um, typical Black Fogger fashion, um, nothing can really go that smooth. Uh, and it turns out, similar to the events of last year, or last uh, LAN, um, Blight showed up to the LAN site, and uh, they get to the hotel, and the hotel is like, okay, cool, well, um, yeah, you know, we got the room for you, but this credit card did not work out. And uh, not only was it Blight TF2, but it was also Blight Counter-Strike. Um, Blight's Counter-Strike team um, also, you know, could not uh, or did not have their hotel rooms paid for and had to pay for them themselves. And actually, there was a uh, thread that just popped up on Gotfrag before um, I started rocking this post um, about uh, Christina, uh, who is uh, uh, from New Jersey, I think, or I don't know. She's a, a nurse. And um, she came through uh, for the former Blight Gaming team and uh, uh, s spotted them um, the money for their hotel rooms. And actually, Black Fogger was trying to beg her to help him out, but instead that she's kind of one-upped him and uh, paid for the bills, but is sponsoring the teams by herself. 
and um, very great for her. I talked to the Fragile uh, yesterday, and uh, he told me about this, and uh, he told me that uh, the Blight TF2 team just split the hotel bill, and, uh, you know, that was that. And, um, you know, I asked him for an interview, and he said that he's basically sick uh, of talking about it and didn't really want to talk about it, so, um, you know, I no worries. Uh, but uh, we did chat about it a little bit, and uh, I want to talk about it uh, some more. Um, so what happened with Blight Gaming and what the Fragile was feeling uh, and what the Fragile said, he, he, he related to me, you know, back when they were on Pandemic, and Pandemic actually folded before the LAN event but still paid for the flight tickets of the Pandemic team, which is a classy, respectable thing to do and is what an eSports sponsor should do, uh, follow through on their promises. And um, <clears throat> uh, so, you know, what the Fragile was most upset about, though, was he said, you know, back in the Pandemic days, Pandemic told us, hey, we can cover your flights. We can't cover your hotel rooms. Can you guys handle that? And the Pandemic players and the Pandemic team handled it um no problem you know what um you know fragile said to me was that he was grateful that you know blight came through and paid for the flight tickets but that black fogger was continuously promising them them the hotel rooms and saying oh yeah yeah i got that i got that don't worry about it don't worry about it and then not following through with it you know and uh obviously uh you know that's disappointing um you know also obviously it must have been very frustrated for those players and uh, with Blight Gaming, I mean, you know, Blackfogger is has just shown himself over and over again to be an unreputable person. Um, you know, I'm totally willing to meet James Larson and, and talk to him in person and interview him. I'm sure he's not the most evil person in the world, but he is very unreputable as a sponsor. And every single team should be highly in, encouraged to invo avoid him. Uh, his promises might sound sweet, and he might follow through on a quarter of his promises, but he's just going to make you more promises, and then you're always going to have in the back of your mind, is he going to keep this promise? And you're propagating an organization that is extremely shady. Um, and and esports teams need to realize that, like, when you're sponsored by a team, like, yeah, you're getting free swag, but you're representing somebody, and if you are representing blight and then like staying on blight as he's just barely fulfilling his promises you're helping a shady organization prevail and get their name out there in the esports community um just go with somebody else you know like if if you can uh survive without um sponsorship you know make a name for your own team do great things uh you know and then uh, a larger sponsor would probably like to sponsor you but just avoid Blight Gaming. It is not going to work out for you, and uh, they've been very unreputable over the years. And it, this is nothing new. This is something that's going on for a while, and people should avoid them. Um, you know, Black Fogger, if he ever wants to get the community back on his side, um, you know, he really needs to, to come clean and uh, to basically start all the way over, you know. Uh, very disappointing, his continued actions, but... You know, so ho hopefully teams don't keep uh, biting uh, his bait because uh, there's nothing good on the end of that line. Um, let's move on to uh, my final, I guess, uh, two pieces, one of them very brief. Um, I was trying to uh, check in with all the teams uh, before uh, I did this little vlog update. Um, I checked in with Blight uh, via the Fragile. Um, checked in with, uh, well, X6. I mainly just went off uh, what's been going on in the community. I tried to communicate with Carnage just a second ago, but he was running off to work. So um, anything that's going on with complexity, I'll have to update you guys on later. Um, you know, Carnage, Enigma, and Relic are a very solid trio, and most likely, you know, those three are definitely going to be staying together. Um, I think that you know, Platinum and Blackie Monster have, have definitely been a duo that has you know been inclined to stay together, and uh, Smacka is a very great player as well. So I don't know, you know, in my personal opinion. I feel that Complexity shouldn't change their roster at all and should just give it another season under this roster since they do have a very talented team um, that just uh, didn't seem like it was quite able to compete with what uh, the other teams had going on uh, this LAN. So we'll he hear more about that. Um, EMG as well, though. Um, EMG, you know, they've had the same uh, roster for the last two seasons. Um, 
uh, you know, and they uh, performed well this uh, land, but obviously with X6 winning the land, um, EMG was not able to repeat as land winners. Um, and, uh, you know, word came out, um, the EMG roster has been very solid, but, um, uh, you know, word has trickled out that they were looking to switch up their roster. And I just talked to uh, Mackie seconds before I started recording this. And uh, he gave me an update on what their, their roster is going to be next season. So they are going to be maintaining their soldier combo, which is Tyrone and Mackie, as well as their demo man, Banny, who uh, um, you'd have to be insane to cut Banny. Um, and then they are going to be shuffling up their scouts and their medic. So it looks like coming in on their scouts are Clockwork and Sizer, and their medic is going to be CB. Which um, <clears throat> I think uh, you know the scouts is um, an awesome change. I don't know if YC50 is still essentially going to be playing the bench for EMG. Um, you know, in the sense of how much time he wants to dedicate to the game. Um, Clockwork is like really um, blossomed into a fantastic uh, scout. He has been a fantastic scout for a while, but I think he's just getting stronger and stronger. Sizer has been involved in the game for so long, and is definitely a very powerful scout. And uh, I think CB is a talented medic, but, um, you know, to be honest, I mean, this is just my straight-up opinion as a commentator. I'm not sure if CB is always the, um, always has the best, I don't know, technical decisions, you know. Um, obviously, I mean, he's much more talented medic than I am. I'm not trying to hate on him, but I just think that, you know, dynamics, some of the times that they've lost games, it's been like, well, I don't know about CB's play on that game. And, um, you know, I think that Shade has gotten some shit, uh, you know, over the, over the years. But I uh, think that Shade has, like, very solid surfs, very solid dodging. Uh, is able to whip out the Ubersaw at some crazy moments. And I think that, you know, maybe if there's a calling issue or, you know, some background things that they want to switch up. Uh, or perhaps even, you know, that this was a package deal that, you know, Sizer uh, came on the team because of CB being there. But, um, you know, either way, you know, CB is a really solid medic. It'll be very interesting to see how this roster turns out because, uh, you know, strong demo man, strong medic, uh, two great scouts, and uh, two great soldiers as well. Uh, a lot of people give Mackie and Tyrone shit, but Mackie is always mixing it up uh, with off classing and stuff, and Tyrone is a fantastic team leader. Uh, you have to give him that without a doubt. So, um, this uh, uh, little vlog has gone on for quite a while. Um, in the meantime that I was posting this, um, I've been uploading uh, the iDemise versus Area 51 uh, VOD that I completed last week, but with fixed audio. Uh, my apologies for that. And then like I had like two re-renders fail on me, and I kept forgetting to re-render because the land was going on and I was having a great time. Um, so uh, apologies for that taking a little bit to uh, re-upload and stuff, but that's going on. And then actually earlier this morning before I did this comment, uh, before I did this video, I did commentary on a new episode that Lucky Luke gave me, uh, featuring a European match between Thermal Take and Too Strong, uh, which is a pretty great, exciting match on Badlands, and that is going to be going up very soon as well. So, a ton of content for you guys. Hope you enjoy it, and more fantastic stuff on the way. Um, there's also uh, we streamed a Highlander match earlier this week uh, with Parable and Dionysus doing commentary on uh, Dust Bowl Pro. Uh, pretty good stuff. You can obviously see that on our justin.tv slash XTV esports archive. But Peter has been uploading 720p um, versions of uh, the cast on our XTV esports YouTube channel. Um, I, uh, there's not one of this, this most recent cast up there right now, but uh, check that out. And, you know, we are trying to get more commentators going on and, and leave us feedback. You know, um, obviously we, we want to... Um, uh, attend to the feedback to your guys' comments, um, you know, and uh, I know when I started commentating, you guys gave me a lot of feedback, and I listened to that feedback, uh, and uh, so yeah, just give us feedback, and uh, we'll continue to work on improving all of our stuff for you guys. So uh, thanks for watching this very long uh, LAN wrap-up video, and the LAN VODs are going to be awesome when they're done. Uh, we will try our best to get those going on, but we are focusing on this spring cleaning event right now. That's really exciting. After uh, we're calling this group uh, AG, EOR, and X Television, we're calling it the unit, and we're going to be putting on some other events in the future as well. We got some great ideas that we've kicked around, and uh, any other ideas that you guys want to give us, uh, make sure to share those with us. So I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.